Good morning, Genesis Church. Hope everybody is having a great Monday so far. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little giddy with anticipation and hope, hope, probably more than anticipation of a real wet, good snow tomorrow. Still, the cynic in me is expecting this to be a complete bust and we're not going to get anything, but we can remain a little bit hopeful and optimistic. Nonetheless, hey, we're in our final week of 21 days in prayer and fasting. Um, as far as a set time, a set season, I still encourage you to maintain, a, first of all, a spirit and attitude of prayer, a discipline a habit of prayer, and we're going to come back and talk about that here in just a minute. But as we get into this final week, I want to encourage you with this. If you have not really fasted anything so far, um, I want to encourage you to do so this week, and I want to encourage you to fast food, um, not go get fast food, but to fast from food. Um, set aside a day, and, and even if it's just a meal, maybe fast breakfast, and if you're not a breakfast person like I am, don't fast breakfast because that's not a sacrifice. Uh, maybe fast lunch, um, fast dinner, maybe fast all day. Um, I know some of you are like, oh, well, I, I don't even know where to start. Well, that's the thing about fasting. There's no place to start. You just don't eat. Um, so don't get bogged down in details of, oh, what can I drink? You know, typically most people say, you know, just water only, but I, I drink coffee. Um, occasionally if I'm, if I'm going a multi-day fast, I'll, I'll probably, um, take a hit of some, some juice, um, on day two or day three, um, just as a little bit of a spark. You, you just want to be careful because you don't want something that's going to like reactivate your metabolism because that's going to make you even more hungry and you're going to get miserable. Um, but, but don't get, especially if you're just fasting a meal or a day, don't get bogged down just all the details. There's just something powerful about saying no to yourself. And saying yes to God. You know, we talked about that yesterday um, in the sermon going all in. Um, Jesus said, if anybody wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow after me. And fasting is a great way to put that into practice that I can't follow Jesus and say yes to myself all the time. I can't say yes to all my needs, wants, cravings fleshly desires and fasting is a good way to put that into practice of saying no um, to self. Um, so I want to encourage you to do that. Um, you you can do it. I promise you, you can do it. And even if you try it and fail it, it will fail, fail at it. It'll be a, a, a profitable experience. So uh, I want to share a scripture that I shared last night at our not a prayer and worship because I think it's fitting as we enter this final week um, a, a prayer and fasting and really try to develop the rhythm and the habit of prayer. You know, P Paul says in First Thessalonians five seventeen to pray without ceasing. That prayer is supposed to be just like the oxygen of our Christian life. That that we maintain a spirit and attitude of prayer. That it's not just something we do occasionally, not just something we do every morning, um, but it's a posture of our heart of of dependence upon God and and focus that our thoughts um, and our mind continually are gravitating to God. It doesn't mean we can think about God all the time because we got jobs and we got focus and got information. And we, if you have kids, I mean, Lord, you have kids. So it's like, mom, 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 dad, 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 you know, so, but that our mind keeps gravitating back to God, to the goodness of the Lord, our dependence on him. But in Hebrews chapter uh, four, verses 14 through 16, the, the writer has taken three and a half chapters and just established the supremacy of Jesus. He's writing to specifically to Jewish people who are familiar with the law of Moses. The, the law is the means by which we obtain God's favor and we maintain righteousness. And he has said that Jesus is greater than the law. Jesus is a better Moses who has brought us a new and better covenant, one of one of faith, um, one of that, that we are sanctified not by the um, our, our own goodness or sacrifices, but we are sanctified by Jesus's righteousness. And in light of all this, he tells them, therefore, since we have this great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us fold, hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every way was tempted just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence, with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, when it comes to prayer, our confidence before God of 
Like, is God really going to hear me? And God is because he's the one that has initiated this call to prayer. He, he has said, come, come to me, bring your needs. I want you, I'm inviting you to come before me with your needs. So yes, God's going to hear because he's the one that has said, bring your needs to me. And our confidence in anticipating and expecting a response from God. Now, we may not always get what we want. God may not do exactly what we ask. He may not do it in the time frame that we ask for. But our confidence before God is based on the goodness of Jesus, not ours. Like, oh, I'm just not a very good Christian. God's not going to hear my prayer. That's not the filter through which God looks at this thing. He invites you. We're, we're sons and daughters of God. And even when my children are acting a fool sometimes, uh, they're still my daughters. And I still listen to them when they come to me. And, and God is the same way. So I want to encourage you. Main, don't let 21 days of prayer and fasting just be a thing. Like maintain a heart of prayer. Develop the habit of prayer. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop some links in the comments below to some very helpful apps um, that, that will guide you. If you're like, man, I just don't know where to start. They will guide you and help you develop a rhythm and a foundation for your prayer life so that you can gain more and more confidence and familiarity and you can grow in your relationship with God. We love you guys. We're praying for you. Let's finish this week strong. Let's keep praying for our, God to work in our own lives, to work in our church, our families, our community, and let's be all in. Let's pick up an oar. Let's row the boat. Let's see God do amazing things this year. Have a great day.